My shopping mantra is simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying that it looks, smells and really feels good. Second, is to recognise that knowledge is crucial. The more you know personally about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So, don't be scared. Ask lots of questions and learn. And when it comes to buying potatoes, a great ingredient if you're cooking on a budget. One greengrocer who can always spot a dud spud is Borough Market Royalty, Fred Foster. It's all about flavour. It's all about choosing the right variety for the right dish. He's been selling top quality veg for over 15 years and really knows his King Edwards from his Duke of York's. Basically, there's two types of potatoes. There's early season and a main crop potato. Early season is basically around about May time. You can't store them. They cannot be stored. You have to buy them and use them within two to three days. When you're buying an early season potato, you must avoid green looking potatoes at all costs. It really is important. And the way you can tell that is if you just brush the potato, the skin comes off really, really easy. And then you want, you want a yellowy or whitey looking potato. The new season potato is a superb potato to use. New season types include Rocket, Home Guard and Maris Bard, but my favourite is the classic Jersey Royal. It has a delicate sweet flavour, it's packed with vitamin C and is great in salads or simply boiled and mixed with olive oil and fresh mint. Jersey potatoes, early crop, are phenomenal. Look at that. Um, <laughs> keep the skin on, it's really important. Just wash it, boil it. It's a beautiful, beautiful potato, and, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, I know it's a potato, I know it's a bit sad, but we're talking about flavour. Right, then what is a main crop potato? It's the crop that is grown specifically for nine months of the year use. When you're looking at a main crop potato, you need to see that the, the eyes aren't too large because they tend to go right through the potato. They've got to be firm, it's very, very important. If a potato in any way feels a little bit soft, discard it. Storage-wise, dark place, cool place, dry place. And that will last till you eat it. Simple as that. Both early season and main crop potatoes come in two main types, waxy and floury. Waxy potatoes have a smooth, dense flesh, and because they're low in starch, they stay firm when cooked. Types include anya and pink fur, but I love charlotte which has an amazing buttery taste and are great sautéed in stews or served whole with roast chicken. Floury potatoes have a fluffy, dry texture when cooked, which makes them great for mashing, roasting or cutting into chips. Types include King Edward, whose smooth, creamy flesh is perfect for potato gratins or with rich meats like beef, and Desiree, which have an amazing red skin and are great for baking or as delicious potato wedges. Old-fashioned types, known as heritage potatoes, are now widely available and have fantastic colours and distinctive tastes that are great when you want something different. This one's called Salad Blue. When you cut it, you then see the most amazing colour. And it's perfect, it looks stunning on the plate, a really popular. It's so important when you're going out to pick your potatoes, you already know in advance what you're going to do with that potato. So whether you're going to put it in a salad, whether it's a, a masher or a chipper, or even a baking potato, each variety has a unique flavour. Fred spot on. Whether new season, main crop, waxy or flowery, potatoes are incredibly versatile and packed with great flavour, the perfect ingredient when you're cooking on a budget. Well, how much do I love potatoes? Well, cook them simply, proper flavours, it doesn't get any better, really. Like all chefs, for me, there's nothing better than seasonal produce at its peak. When fruit and veg is fresh in season and fantastically ripe, I can't wait to get back in the kitchen. To get the most out of your cooking, always use ingredients in their prime. For perfect boiled potatoes, always start them off in cold water and never boiling water. This way, by the time the centers of the potatoes are cooked, the outside won't be falling apart. And when you're cooking potatoes, always cook extra so there's leftovers. They're fantastic to have on hand for making my delicious gnocchi and potato rusties or a classic bubbling squeak. Sweet pepper sauce with grilled prawns. For the sauce, in hot olive oil, fry chopped garlic and diced bread. Then put them in a blender, add chopped tomatoes, 
blister the skin of red peppers under a hot grill, intensifying the flavour. Leave to cool, then they're easy to peel. Chop and add. Blitz. Add smoked paprika, chilli flakes and roughly chopped almonds. A squeeze of lemon and a dash of sherry vinegar. Season. Blitz again and add olive oil. This sauce keeps really well in the fridge and will intensify in flavour. I love it with simple king prawns. Just add olive oil and griddle for two minutes on each side. Sweet pepper sauce with grilled prawns, simply delicious. Making your gnocchi is so simple to do, yet the results are absolutely stunning. And it's a great way of using up leftover baked potatoes. You can make gnocchi just with flour and eggs. However, the potato gives it that nice, light, sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Just cut them in half. Take your spoon and scoop the inside of those potatoes. I'm using leftover baked potatoes, but this really works as well with leftover boiled potatoes. Two choices. You can get a fork and sort of mash the potato and get it nice and light and fluffy, or this little gadget. It's called a ricer. I suppose it's a posh word for a potato masher. Just squeeze gently. You can see how nice and light it is. Almost like fluffy little strands of potato. You can do this when the potatoes are hot. It'll go through the ricer so much quicker. Just slice that off there. Now, a nice spoon of ricotta in. A little touch of salt and pepper. It's really important to season the mixture as we go along, otherwise the gnocchi becomes really bland. Flour over the ricotta. Sieved so there's no lumps. One delicious egg. Give that a little whisk. Now, make a little well in the centre. You want a nice, soft, pliable ball of dough. Give that a really good mix. Get some thyme flowers in there. And this thyme is light, fragrant, and it's just a really nice herb. And with the ricotta, it tastes brilliant. Just pick the little tips of the thyme flowers. Next, flour your hands generously and knead the mixture into a dough. Fold in and push. And basically what it's doing is getting it nice and smooth. As it starts to get a little bit wet, and just add a little touch of flour. But we want something really nice and soft. Now, don't overwork it. It stops the gnocchi from expanding when it hits the pan. That's exactly what I want. A nice, sort of soft, fragrant ball. Cut the ball in half. Lightly flour the hands and just roll it gently. And just think of a, a big, long cigar. The mixture will start getting a little bit sort of wetter, but do not add lots of flour. Now, lightly flour the knife so when you slice the gnocchi, it doesn't stick. Cut the dough into bite-sized pieces. Just take your finger, dip it in the flour and push down. Why? I want my gnocchi to look like a pillow. And for me, the most important part there is that not one of them are identically the same shape. Water on. Bring it up to the boil. A little touch of olive oil in there. Lightly flour your hand. Lift up the gnocchi. In to the rolling boiling water. Turn that pan to stop them from sticking at the bottom. And let them simmer. And they start to sort of tell you they're cooked when they start floating. Get a pan on. Get that nice and hot. Now they're just starting to come up to the top. And you can continue cooking them like that. I like blanching them in the water, taking them out, and then frying them. To study the gnocchi, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Gently lift up and look. They've doubled in size. Drain it, get rid of the excess water, and straight in to the hot pan. Mm. This is where they start to take on a completely different texture. Nice crisp, sautéed texture on the outside. Gnocchi loves fresh pepper. So, pepper in. And you'll see, as I start turning them, I've got this really nice little sort of brown colour. And they're almost puffing up now, like little parcels. So I want them nice and sautéed, both sides, but light and creamy in the centre. Fresh garden peas in. 
And the butter gives it that really nice sort of Benoisette flavour on the end. Beautiful. Put a little bit of fresh thyme over the peas. And then finally, I want to lift it up. Fresh lemon. Zest the lemon over. So, smells incredible. And then finally, seal the deal with a touch of grated Parmesan cheese. Give your veg some attitude, and you'll get amazingly elegant dishes on a budget that are always guaranteed to impress. What more do you want from great cooking? Cheap to make, easy to cook, and absolutely stunning.